This is Cooking Simplify with JJ Evans and today we're making broiled chicken burgers. Very exciting and very unusual to some because you normally use a grill or you normally would throw them in a skillet and cook them on top of the stove. But instead we're going to broil them today. We're using two pounds of ground chicken and the ground chicken of course came from my favorite store Kroger that I love to go to because they have the best deals when it comes to meat. As I love Aldi's when it comes to certain products like produce and dry goods but I feel a lot safer with my meat coming from Kroger's. Um, the, actually, it was by Purdue for the ground chicken, and it was $3.49 a piece. For both of these, I've got the potato wedges right here that I'm going to throw in my lovely air fryer. And these were $1.70, I believe. I'll check the receipt later to get the correct pricing for you. And then, of course, I already have all my spices ready to go. I've got my garlic powder. I've got pepper. I've got Lowry seasoning salt. I've got a salicized salt, I've got red pepper that's ground, I've got onion powder, gourmet bur burger seasoning, and I've got balsamic vinegar. And of course, I've already cracked one egg. So even if you don't have an air fryer, you can always just bake your fries in the oven and still, you know, we won't have to worry about a lot of grease or making a big mess on top of the stove. Because it's been one of those days where it's been a long, hectic work week and I'm just like, uh, no. I need a good burger and a good beer and I need a fry. That makes me very happy. <laughs> so we're going to go ahead and pour our ground chicken into this big bowl here. I've already pre-opened these for you so you can see. Okay. So this kind of looks like turkey, but it's not. This is ground chicken. It's a little bit leaner as far as protein. I'm going to give my hands a quick wash here. prepare our broiled chicken burgers I'm gonna go ahead and put our fries in the air fryer because they're gonna take about 18 to 20 minutes depending on how crispy you want them to be and there's already a preset setting for fries so you don't really have to worry about them you just take and pop this out you don't have to add any oil to it or anything and because we're using wedges we can just toss everything in there if you had larger fries you have to do it in sections and do half the bag and then come back into the other half and it's a pain in the butt so as you can see here i'm just going to go to manual and it'll automatically kick on by itself for 18 minutes and if i need anything to be crispier i'll go back in and do that myself now i'm going to add one egg and this egg it just holds it together and that way when you form your patties they're not crumbling or falling apart so it's almost like meatloaf you add an egg to meatloaf you would add an egg when you're doing burgers So we've got that going. Then we're just going to use two teaspoons of balsamic vinegar. So that's good. We're just going to use as much Lowry's as you desire. I'm like, I'll use probably about a tablespoon. We just want to make sure we get a lot of good seasoning so that the chicken burgers have a lot of flavor. And then, of course, the tablespoon of pepper. The tablespoon of our lovely garlic powder, which I use garlic in everything just about because it has so many good health benefits and it's just, it's good. We have our lovely onion powder and I'm just gonna use half a tablespoon. bit of our ground red pepper and you can just use as much as you desire if you want it to be spicier then add a little bit more if you don't want as much spice but you just want a teeny tiny amount of heat then you can just do maybe half a teaspoon and like with me I just add you know just a little bit over like a teaspoon nothing crazy I don't want it to be too hot and then I'm gonna add a tablespoon of italicized salt Then the fun stuff, the gourmet burger seasoning. I will probably do about a tablespoon of this as well. Okay. So 
So last but not least, I'm gonna go dive in hands first. Of course, you've seen I'm taking my ring off because I'm not like any other chef on TV. I'm not about to sit here and mix with my ring on and mess it up. So I have my hands already clean and ready to go. I have my big red table pan here. I've already poured two tablespoons of oil in here and got it already pre-greased for you. So that way when I get done forming patties, I can just drop them in here and then I'll wash my hands. And the oven is already preheated to 500 degrees, which is whirl. So that way, once I'm done over here, I can just go ahead and pop them in the oven and you'll cook them seven to nine minutes per side, but you don't wanna make them too, too big because then there'll be a temperature issue as far as cooking them, whether or not you need to cook them longer or you need to cut the center to see is it actually ready. Okay, so if you just bring the camera a little bit closer, I want them to see me mixing this in and getting the egg all in there. section and yeah I can pinch off or use as much as I would like in order to make these burgers. And it's not about perfection. You don't have to have the perfect patties. I know some people are over here, oh well it's not shaped well enough and all that uh honey please. It's the end of the work week. We're all tired. Um this is as good as it's gonna get today as far as this patty. <laughs> If you have kids, you're probably extremely tired at this point. I haven't made it to that journey yet, but maybe one day. <laughs> okay. So it's almost like we're doing patty cake here at this point. <laughs> We've got two down, and that is about the size that you want them to be. And like I said, you can just pinch off or add as much meat as you need to. If you feel like you don't have enough meat that you have going into your burger, of course, like I said, just pinch off or either add as much as you would like to get it to the size or the consistency that you would want it to be. to make extra because I have a hungry husband that works out five days a week in the gym. So he even checked the amount of protein that was in the ground chicken and it's 22 grams for those that didn't know. Okay, this one, like I said, it's a little too chunky. It needs to come down a little bit in size. So I want it to cook evenly because they're all about the same size. I don't want this one to be too, too big. able to make two more all together. I just want to see here.
but you're just making these to fit the size of the bun that you're using. If you were using a larger bun, then you would make the patties larger. But you would need to go up on temperature. I would probably do 10 to 12 minutes per side and just monitor it. Because again, everybody's oven cooks at a different temperature. So all of our ovens are not the same when it comes to temperature wise. Just a little bit left. Okay, we're using all of the brown chicken. We're not gonna sit over here and waste any time or play any games today. Not like we have enough to make a burger that's almost the consistency and size of all the other ones, so it'll still cook probably about the same temperature. And it's okay if this happens, it's not quite the crisis. I know some people, well, how do I get them to be the exact same size? Don't worry about all that. So all of that is good. I'm going to wash my lovely hands that look gross. <laughs> but at first, I'm gonna go ahead and throw away this trash. Let me for me. I have a trash can that I can just step on and throw my trash in it without having to really come in contact with it. I'm gonna use the back of my wrist, turn the water on, and again, use the back of my wrist to get into soap. Scraps and come all over here to the trash can and burn that away. And we're good to go for the oven. I'm like, we're just gonna do the seven and nine minutes per side. If I need to cook them a little bit longer, like I said, just monitor the temperature. If you're not sure of what to do, then go ahead and just, you know, do the temperature for a little bit longer or cut the center so that you can actually see, hey, is it cooked all the way through? Is it white in the center? Are the juices running clearer in the chicken burgers? But it's just all a new take on just doing burgers without using a grill or without using a skillet. Um, next week, I'm probably gonna post a video on YouTube and it'll be showing where to shop and where to get the best deals on groceries. And I'll also be posting a juicing video soon. So I've had a bunch of coworkers ask me, you juice, but I don't know what exactly to juice because vegetables are not the most appealing thing when you juice them. So what can I juice as far as fruit wise with the vegetables to make them taste better? So that will be coming soon to YouTube. And I also will be working on a pesto chicken dish, so a whole lot will be going on soon. But this has been Cooking Simplify with JJ Evans. Thank you. Have a good evening.